Is something really strange going on on Voyager 1? Is it sending weird data? Is it actually detecting something really unusual? Is there a mysterious issue? Is there a glitch? Is it sending impossible data? Maybe it's sending some strange signals, as CNN implied? Uh, yeah, it's one of those weeks again. A lot of attention-grabbing titles trying to make a big deal out of pretty much nothing. Hello, wonderful person, this is Anton, and as some of you requested, I decided to finally talk about what's happening with Voyager 1, the incredible NASA probe that's currently traveling in the interstellar space. Although a much better way of imagining where it's actually located is by looking at the Universe Sandbox in order to see its location in the solar system along with the Voyager 2 craft that's somewhere right there and seeing where it's actually headed. So it's basically going that way. And that way is pretty much nothing. We'll actually discuss some of the objects it's going to be passing in a few minutes. But first, so let's get to the point. What is happening with Voyager 1 and is it really sending some mysterious signals? Well, to some extent, yes. But it's actually expected for one simple reason. This mission is ancient. It was launched on this rocket back in 1977, making this probe almost 45 years old. That is insanely old in terms of space technology. And on top of this, it's traveling through some relatively dangerous and somewhat radioactive conditions with quite a lot of galactic cosmic rays coming from every direction. And that's because back in 2012, and for Voyager 2 it was 2018, both probes entered what's known as interstellar space outside of the so-called heliosheath or solar bubble. And so now they're no longer protected by the sun's magnetosphere and instead are bombarded by all kinds of interstellar radiation from every direction. Naturally, with time, this can cause serious problems and for Voyager 1 it's been in these conditions for practically 10 years now. But a few weeks ago, the scientists at NASA started to get unusual signals from a system known as AACS, Attitude and Articulation Control Subsystem. It's actually not just one instrument, it's several instruments responsible for keeping the radio antenna pointed toward Earth in order to have stable communication. But it does involve 16 hydrazine thrusters, 3 axis stabilization gyroscopes, and several referencing instruments, along with several redundant and backup instruments with the sole purpose of essentially keeping the probe oriented in a certain direction. And here the scientists are usually aware when it's misaligned. If the signal coming from the probe suddenly weakens, it means that the antenna is not pointed in the right direction. But in the last few years, nothing like this has happened and the signals have been consistently pretty strong, which means that it's not really misaligned, yet it is sending the signals from this subsystem, suggesting that it's sort of having problems with orientation. In other words, there's a bit of a disconnect between what AACS is detecting and what is actually happening with the craft. But as of today, everything else is operating normally, the probe is receiving and sending signals, and all of the commands have been so far executed, and all of the science instruments are working fine as well. So it's not that the system is broken, it's just the telemetry part seems to be a little bit off. And that is quite possibly because of the radiation conditions that might have damaged one of the parts inside the probe. And it does seem to be the case because a lot of the data that it's sending to us seems to be kind of randomly generated. In other words, it doesn't actually reflect what's happening with the probe right now. Here's actually a very beautiful image of the trajectory of the probe as it would appear in the night skies from planet Earth. And as of right now, nothing else has triggered any onboard full protection systems and everything seems to be operating normally. More importantly though, the signal is very strong and the antenna is pointed in the right direction. And so here, the scientists behind the mission highlighted that, well, you have to remember, it's a 45-year-old mission, this is sort of expected, and the scientists have also announced officially that by 2025, it's very likely everything will completely stop operating here. The mission is most likely going to be over in approximately three years maximum. And that's because it's running out of its nuclear fuel that has been powering the device for 45 years. Every single year, the spacecraft has been losing approximately 4 watts of electrical power, and by 2025, there's just not going to be enough energy produced by this to successfully continue the mission past the date. Here's actually a gorgeous picture of Jupiter's great red spot taken by the probe back in the 70s. Not to mention that both Voyager probes have been doing a huge overtime and were never meant to operate this long. The mission actually ended back in the 90s, but it's been going strong for 30 more years after that, Here's a beautiful picture of Mimas, one of the moons of Saturn, and the picture of Saturn itself. And so the combination of the age of the mission mixed with the high radiation environments that the probes have been pretty much flying through for the past few years makes this an extremely challenging experience for any kind of technology. And so it's actually really surprising that 
more things have not happened just yet. And on top of this, this is not even the first time the probe is having some issues. Back in 2017, so approximately 5 years ago, it started to experience a slight loss in the signal, which the scientists determined was very likely due to the problems in its main thrusters. In other words, the thrusters responsible for maintaining the positioning here were no longer operating normally. But because there are 16 thrusters on the probe, the scientists had some backups. I don't actually see them in this particular model, but they are somewhere there. And so the scientists did decide to switch to backup thrusters that haven't functioned for 37 years. They were actually only used once in order to change the Voyager's trajectory as it was leaving the solar system. And turned out that everything worked as it was supposed to. And since then, for 5 years, nothing major has occurred on the probe. And also, unlike Voyager 1 probe, Voyager 2 hasn't really experienced any major problems at all. Or the chances are it might because it actually took at least 5 years for the Voyager 1 to start experiencing issues in the interstellar space. Voyager 2 only entered the interstellar space back in 2018, so it's only been 4 years now. And that's actually why even today these two missions are so crucial to us. These are the only two spacecrafts we have that are flying through the interstellar space with actual functioning scientific instruments that are currently returning a lot of data to NASA and to a lot of scientists on planet Earth. And there are five different instruments currently actively doing a lot of science. We have magnetic field investigation, low energy charged particle investigation, cosmic ray investigation, plasma wave investigation, and even the ultraviolet spectrometer that is only active on Voyager 1, and plasma investigator that's only active on Voyager 2. And so for the next three years at least, until 2025, they will all have just enough power to collect and return data from the craft. But by 2025, the scientists will most likely start turning some of them off, and very likely most of them, because there's just not going to be enough power. There's actually this article from NASA published back in 2019 that talks a little bit more about what devices were turned off already and why they were turned off first. Specifically, they actually turned off the heater. But even without the heater, everything seems to be operating just fine. You can find this article in the description below. But what's absolutely insane about NASA's engineering and of course the mission itself is that the scientists currently think that it might be possible to somehow operate some of these instruments past 2025 and possibly even until early 2030s when the other problem is going to be the distance. At this point, the probes are going to be too far away for the NASA's deep space network to actually be able to communicate with them. And so after 2036, it's definitely mission over. But even right now, at a distance of just over 155 astronomical units away from the Sun and from planet Earth, the probes are still able to communicate quite effectively, even though it takes approximately two days for the signal to reach and return from Voyager 1 and Voyager 2. And that's of course because the light travels approximately 21 hours before it can reach the probe. But while it's still functioning and while it's still collecting data, it's definitely going to teach us so much about the interstellar space and the region around the Sun that we know so little about, making both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 some of the most important space missions ever, with an absolutely incredible record of science. But to put things in perspective, they're still really close to everything in the solar system and still far away from everything outside of the solar system. They're actually only going to reach Oort Cloud in about 300 years from now. And strangely enough, it will take them approximately 30,000 years to fly through it. But after about 40,000 years, the Voyager 1 probe is going to fly approximately 1.5 light years away from the star you see right here. One of the closer stars to us, known as Gliese 445. It's currently about 17 light years away from us, but it's flying toward us and the Voyager probe is slowly moving away from the solar system, so within 40,000 years they are going to be pretty close to one another. Oh, I guess pretty close is a bit of a relative term here. And the only other star we know of that is going to pass close to within about one light year is a barely known M-type star known as TYC 3135-52-1. It's not really well studied and we know very little about the star, but within 300,000 years it is going to approach the star within about one light year. And so if anyone is living around the star, they might be able to capture the golden record that's currently traveling on both Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 probes. As you might already know, this is the record that was created by the scientists back in the 70s with the participation from the iconic Carl Sagan that also includes the map to the solar system using the known pulsars along with some other interesting stuff that you can learn more about in some of the previous videos. And so in that sense, well, we're coming closer and closer to that end of the mission, but still not there yet. 
And when it comes to this particular anomaly, currently the scientists believe that they will probably be able to find some kind of a software solution to this, or possibly use one of the redundant hardware systems that is still active and still works just fine. In other words, even though the probe is sending strange signals, they're not unexpected. They are sort of a result of being old, plus a result of being located in an extremely violent environment with quite a lot of radiation. But I guess for now, that's sort of all we know about the probes. We'll definitely come back and talk more about this once there are some updates, or once the probes discover something else unusual, like they did a few years ago when there is a video about this on the channel that you can explore yourself. For now though, that's pretty much it. These are super super important missions, and every single year now, scientists are going to be collecting even more data just to get as much as they can from them. We're not going to have an interstellar probe for a very very long time, if ever. And so every little bit coming from them is super important. But I guess until we learn more, thank you for watching, subscribe, maybe share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.